We are in the new 2021 Dodge Challenger, the 2021 Challenger Scat Pack. Also, this actually, believe it or not, is more spacious than the Camaro and the Mustang. So, wanted to check it out for that reason as well. It gives it a little bit of a leg up when comparing those three because it is just frankly a very fun car to drive. Which variant you go with, the power plant on this beast is going to be the same. Powering this one is going to be a 6.4 liter naturally aspirated Hemi V8, putting out 485 horsepower at 6,100 RPM. 475 pound-feet of torque available at 4100 rpm power sent to the rear light there is an optional torque flight automatic with paddle shifters that we do actually have today that one is going to be a 1545 dollar option free highway taking premium mentioned there are some drive modes there's actually a button labeled drive modes go figure just in front of the shifter when you press that it's going to give you automatic custom sport and track adjusting things like the shift points throttle response steering sensitivity things Things like that essentially. I did want to also mention there is launch control for the Challenger Scat Pack as well, which is going to be amazing if you plan on taking this thing to the drag strip. So, wanted to give you an end. Let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here. And by the way, to put it in full manual shift mode, what you want to do is slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left. That is going to give you full control over the shifting. And now let's find a straightaway acceleration to go along with that as always braking is going to be equally important let me start with the new feature for the brakes actually on the 2021 challenger scat pack you can now get srt branding to those brembo brakes if you wanted it so not really a huge feature there but it's going to be a slight change i should say up front you're going to get 14.2 inch ventilated front disc that is going to change with the wide body variant bumping that up to 15.7 inch ventilated front discs in the back either way you're going to get 13.8 inch solid rear discs as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes that comes in did want to also mention in addition to that though there is a dynamics package that goes for two thousand three hundred ninety five dollars that is going to give you six piston front calipers so that's going to give you a little bit better braking there as well but then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a short and long arm front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bar did want to also mention though where the suspension really gets good for the Challenger Scat Pack is there is an adaptive damping suspension that goes for $995 so it is optional but this is a suspension component I always like to recommend in my reviews because it really does give you the best of both worlds so it monitors each shock absorber individually so it's going to adjust to the road imperfections not only giving you a smoother ride but when you're going around the turns a little bit faster it's also going to tighten up that suspension giving you better handling as well so all in all like I said best of both worlds and definitely an option I would recommend for this one and so overall though as far as ride quality goes you are gonna feel a little bit more of the road because this is a sports car or a muscle car I should say after all but it's definitely not too bad I mean it's something you get used to out the back sometimes with sports cars or muscle cars whatever you don't always get that like let's say the Camaro for instance but honestly with the Challenger it's perfect visibility and no issues for me whatsoever brand new 2021 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack all right so here she is you guys the new 2021 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack finished in triple nickel definitely looks good anyway so let's go ahead and start up front of the challenger here split front grille you guys can see you got the rt badging on the one side challenger badging located on the passenger side of the vehicle another thing i think is really cool about this i'm going to get up close here so you guys can see it the daytime running lights which by the way comes standard across the board within the inner part of those headlights it's actually it serves as an air filter and i love the dodge logo within that as well it's on both sides actually but i'm just going to show you one side here but actually serves as an air filter directing cool air to the engine to help cool it down i think that's one of the coolest features something dodge originally did on the hellcats but now they have brought it down to the scat packs it's pretty freaking cool if you ask me but anyways also down below gotta mention that matte black front lip always looks good down there and then just heading up top you got the ram air style hood which assists with engine cooling once again yes it is functional in case anybody was curious about that let me touch on the headlights a little bit halogen headlights actually still come standard on the challenge scat pack believe it or not but i will say you guys can see we don't have the halogens today because we actually have the optional hid headlights which come with the driver confidence group that goes for 1295 dollars if you wanted them that is again what you guys are looking at either way you get the automatic feature still meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there so that's always good daytime running lights are
smart LEDs all the way around and that comes standard across the board as well. One of the cool things about the Challenger is just below this headlights, you actually do have fog lights that come standard across the board and they are just halogen. They don't come standard in LEDs, unfortunately, or HIDs or anything like that. So I wanted to mention that too, but a very, very nice retro, very nice look up front to the Challenger Scat Pack. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. And so yet again, I have climbed in the woods for you guys to get a better look at the Challenger Scat Pack here from the side. Black window surrounds do come standard matte black side skirts towards the bottom as well. Of course, you have the Bumblebee badging located on the front fender, 392 just below that. And that's classic Scat Pack logo right there, of course. As far as that RT side graphics go, that is going to be optional. We do have that option. It's not going to come standard. So imagine the car without the graphics. That's essentially how it's going to come standard. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They are actually heated. Heated side mirrors do come standard on the Challenger Scat Pack as well. So that's always nice. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 20 by 9 inch double five spoke alloys is the standard configuration on this one. However, there are of course plenty of optional 20 inch wheel designs available. Most of them being 20 by 9.5 inch when it comes to the design. So a little bit thicker setup when it comes to the wheels. However, I will say the wide body variant actually ups that to 20 by 11 inch wheels. That is pretty darn cool. And that's going to give you optimal grip in the back, of course, when you go to accelerate and really it helps with everything, including handling and all that. But anyways, wanted to mention that as well. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Challenger Scat Pack. So, but now since we are around back, when it comes to that matte black rear spoiler, the standard configuration actually has the Bumblebee logo located in the upper right hand corner. If you guys are looking where I'm looking right now, but we don't have that today. And reason being is we do have the optional SRT performance spoiler that goes for $995. So that's what you guys are looking at right now. Of course, just below that, you can find LED split taillights. They do come standard Dodge lettering in the middle of it all. And just below it all, you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I promised it to you guys. You guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> Now, since we are around back of the Challenger, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there actually is a button on the key fob. You simply press that twice. Also a button kind of camouflaged into the trunk itself. That is yet another way you can go about opening that rear trunk. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 16.2 cubic feet, which quite honestly is kind of impressive. But anyways, if that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for a good bit of extra space there then if you needed it. Then making our way up to the rear legroom, this is where the Challenger really wins when you're comparing it to the Camaro and the Mustang. For instance, the Challenger rear legroom actually comes in at 33.1 inches, which can be actually comparable to some sedans out there. But for reference, I am mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Still gonna be kind of a tight fit, quite honestly. Again, I'm six feet tall, but still, the fact that it has 33.1 inches of rear legroom is great when you compare it to the Mustang and the Camaro, which both come in at right around 29 inches even. So a good bit of extra space when you're comparing those two at least. So you should be able to fit a small child, maybe even an adult if you fiddle around with the front seats a little bit. So I think that's pretty cool, quite honestly. And believe it or not, the headroom was also quite nice. And there's actually rear ventilation for those rear passengers as well. Another one of those features that doesn't even always come standard on sedans, and definitely not the Mustang I know. So pretty cool that there is rear ventilation back there as well. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats of the Challenger. Eight-way power adjustable driver's seat with four-way power lumbar does come standard. Then a four-way manually adjustable passenger seat comes with that as well. Heated front seats on this one actually do come standard too. That's pretty cool. Cloth seating with the B logo at the top is going to be the standard setup for the Challenger Scat Pack. However, there is a plus package that goes for $2,095 that we have today. And that gives you the Napa leather Alcantara seating combination that you were currently looking at. Again, with the B logo towards the upper portion of the seat. But I will say, seats are plenty comfortable. Definitely bolstered quite well on the corners there. So it's going to hold you in place around the turn. So definitely no issues whatsoever when it comes to seat comfort and I love the Alcantara. I've always been a fan of suede and Alcantara seating, so definitely quite nice there. 
Now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. 10 and 2 grips are definitely quite nice. Leather wrapped is going to be the standard configuration, which is perfect. Heated steering wheel is going to be optional, but it doesn't come standard on the Challenger Scat Pack. As expected there. It's just a luxury feature, I guess you could say. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup on this one. Let me first start by showing you guys the key. You do have your Dodge logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and that little circle with the times two button in the middle, that is going to be remote start. So you can warm the Challenger up on super cold days. Kind of unlike today, actually, in Pennsylvania. So kind of nice out today. But anyways, it is all a push button start with keyless entry that comes standard. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake here and press that engine start button, which is located just by the driver's right knee. It's open that once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is to your right, and there is a digital portion of the gauges found in the middle there. And so that can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the left side there, giving you things like a digital speedometer, which honestly is probably what I would leave it on. There's also your tire pressure information, but most importantly, there are the performance pages, the performance portion of the gauges where really you can test out pretty much anything you could possibly think of and it actually saves those statistics to the car. I love this about Dodge products. I love this about the Challenger. You can do a zero to 60 timer if you want to. There's zero to 100. There's your quarter mile timer, braking distance, g four statistics. And most importantly, and my very favorite feature of this one, top speed it actually saves the very top speed that this vehicle has ever gone i absolutely love that and other manufacturers don't do that the mustang does this kind of thing as well but it doesn't give you the top speed and the camaro does kind of the same thing as well so I don't know, I really like that top speed indicator on the Challenger. And now don't take that as an incentive to go as fast as humanly possible, but I do like that it's there nonetheless. But of course you also have your fuel economy, trip A, trip B information, audio settings, safety information when you need your next oil change, the list goes on. So really quite a bit you could check out up there. Having said that, me personally, I still wouldn't have minded a full digital gauge cluster because really you can completely customize it when you got that. You can still have this retro look to the gauges just in full digital form. So in the future, I know Dodge wants to keep this car retro and they still can. I just would prefer a full digital gauge cluster because you can completely customize it, change the colors, change everything about the look of it. So that's what I would prefer. But touching then on overall interior quality, there is a power sunroof that goes for $1,295 that we do not have today. Overhead sunglass holder does come standard up there. Dual zone climate control also comes standard. Auto dimming rear view mirror with garage door transmitter is going to come standard as well. By the way, the garage door transmitters, they're located on the roof there for up to three different garage doors. But the fact that it's an auto dimming roof view mirror, that's definitely very convenient there. Aluminum foot pedals coming with a couple of the different package options. We do have them today, so I wanted to show them to you guys. And actually there's premium stitch door and dash panels that are available. That's one thing I sometimes get in the comments that the interior quality isn't the best because of that, but it is available as an option. So I wanted to mention that as well. One of the cool parts about the interior quality, I like the 392 Bumblebee badging found just underneath of the passenger side air vent there that definitely looks really good and there is some stitching to the leather located around the infotainment screen just above the gauges and all that that definitely looks good as well but i will say one optional package that i would go with at least for the interior there is a carbon and suede interior package that goes for 1595 dollars and that adds authentic carbon fiber interior accents and a suede headliner as well so that's a pretty cool package there if you're in interior quality at least but just to the right of the shifter you got a little bit of storage there just behind that you have dual cup holders of course and then all of your hookups centrally is going to be located within the center armrest of course you got cargo space in there as well but two usb charging ports auxiliary port any 12 volt power outlet within that center armrest as well so overall interior quality is pretty much as expected it could be better and it can get better with the optional package options that i listed to you guys but now taking a look at the tech screen and is an 8.4 inch color touchscreen display which still believe it or not is kind of above average for the segments so that's kind of cool bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard android auto apple carplay also standard meaning if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the challenger via usb cable and you can display a free navigation system up on that screen as well as the ability to like and dislike your pandora songs and there's a couple other compatible apps up there as well factory navigation system is available for 790 
$95. Of course, you don't need it though if you have a smartphone, like I just was saying. Drive mode adjustments are also located up there as well as launch control. There's also climate control settings you could check out up there. And of course, your radio settings. And so by the way, when it comes to the sound system on the Challenger Scat Pack, six speakers is going to be the standard configuration but there are actually two different optional sound systems available for the Challenger Scat Pack, one of them being an Alpine sound system. That is the one we have today that comes with nine speakers and 506 watts, which is a good bit. We're gonna test that out in a second, but $995 is the price of that one if you were interested. And then there is the 18 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. 18 speakers in a car of this size? That should be absolutely insane, but $1,795 with that one. There's gonna be a subwoofer in the trunk there's a green edge external amplifier as well with that one but like i was saying we got the alpine sound system it is one of the optional ones with nine speakers and 506 watts so all i'm going to do here is simply turn on the radio we're going to find out what's playing today and let's test out the sound system on this out as well and that's what you're going to get with 506 watts again especially with a two-door car you're going to have the loudness the clarity was excellent not quite as much bass as i would expect that sound system to have but that's what you got the harman Kardon for but Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display though, is when you do put this one in reverse, you will find a rear view camera that does come standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. This one is not an IIHS top safety pick as expected really for the segment here. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system also comes standard. Rear parking sensors actually come standard standard as well you don't always get that so that's pretty cool but i did want to mention there are two optional packages that are available when it comes to safety one of them is a driver confidence group that goes for one thousand two hundred ninety five dollars that gives you a